Hi, everyone. Thank you for coming to our presentation today. This is the second of three presentations from uh, Sports slash Baseball Info Solutions. Uh, the topic of this presentation is, an, presentation is an update of something that we did here a few years ago uh, that we've presented in the past. Has the shift seen its day? Why are we looking into this topic? As you'll see as from the slides that are up there right now, for the first time in a while, shift usage was down in 2017, especially full shift usage. And there have been things written and said publicly that have brought varying viewpoints on the shift to light. People might not think that it is as valuable as it used to be. So we decided to go through our previous presentation, go through our data again, and look at the shift and see how valuable it is in 2017 and now into 2018. And as you can see, shift usage declined. Uh, shift usage on balls in play, there was about a 5% total decline. That decline was mostly in full shifts. It went down 16% from 2016 to 2017. Meanwhile, partial shifts increased greatly, 9% from 2016 to 2017. So there seems to be a trend with how teams are choosing to use the shift. And just to refresh everyone, and I think this audience knows pretty well, a full shift is three defenders on one side of the infield. You can see an example of it right there. Partial shift, the shortstop is not quite to the right side of the infield, but he's clearly moved from his uh, position, as is the third baseman. The third baseman is playing way over toward the shortstop position. So let's, uh, let's take a look at how uh, shift performance was in 2017. Now, the shift is intended to defense ground balls and short line drives, so we decided to look at it from that perspective. There are a number of other ways that you could certainly look at, sh at defensive shifts, but this is, this is the intent of the defense that we are looking at to defend against a very specific action by the batter. And we used a methodology uh, that involved weighting the information. The uh, way that we wanted to do this was to make sure that we didn't overvalue the statistics of players who rarely see a shift or who almost always see a shift. In other words, uh, players, uh, in, uh, going back a couple years, a player like a David Ortiz. So we look at players against shifts and no shifts and scale the statistics to the lower of those two amounts. That way, the players who matter the most have a considerable sample of shift plays and non-shift plays to look at. And you can see, how did batters fare in 2017? Against full shifts, when they hit a ground ball or a short line drive, they hit 241 through our weighted uh, measurement system. Against a partial shift, they hit 269. And against no shift at all, they hit 271. Let's take a look at the teams that fared best using our metrics in terms of shift effectiveness last season. The Rays and the Indians and the Brewers are the three top teams. The Rays with 29 shift runs saved, the Indians with 28, the Brewers with 26. An interesting contrast among the three teams, the Rays and the Brewers ranked among the top teams in the majors in shift usage over the course of the season. The Indians are much more of a middle of a pack team, but they shifted very effectively throughout the year, uh, and thus they wound up second in our system in shift runs saved. And you can see there are a good number of teams that benefited from the use of defensive shifts. On a specific player level, we've done this before, we bring him back uh, for this presentation to Anthony Rizzo of the Chicago Cubs. He is kind of our uh, poster person for why use defensive shifts. Anthony Rizzo, the last two seasons, has hit 82% of his ground balls and short line drives to the right of second base. You can see all of the, the right side is in red, and the uh, up the middle and to the left side of the infield are in uh, kind of a turquoise and blue. Anthony Rizzo, over uh, the course of last season, we calculated that he lost 38 hits due to defensive shifts. That was second in Major League Baseball to the who was player who was mentioned in the previous presentation, Mitch Moreland, who lost 39. And just to give an explanation of the uh, methodology here, as you can see that Rizzo also gained 16 hits due to defensive shifts. That's not us watching a play and saying, 
ground ball to the right side. Oh, we're going to give him uh, credit for losing a hit due to a, def due to a defensive shift. Uh, or we're going to give him credit when he gets a hit against a defensive shift and say, oh, uh, that's, that would have been a hit against an unshifted defense. We're actually looking at our, um, at our defensive evaluation system and looking at all the different spots on the diamond when the defense is unshifted. So if, uh, and I want to be careful about presenting this, but if Anthony Rizzo hits a ball to a spot that in a unshifted defense uh, is a hit 70% of the time, but in a shifted defense he makes an out, he would have gotten a hit 70% of the time by our, we're, we're going to give him credit for that 0.7 uh, uh, in terms of getting hits. And that's, you add all those uh, at-bats up over the course of a season, you get, it's a credit debit system. Rizzo lost 38 hits, he gained 16. Where did that rank among the leaders in Major League Baseball? Well, he tied with Mitch Moreland. Each of them lost 22 hits due to defensive shifts. Justin Smoke lost 21, Albert Pujols 19, Logan Morrison 18. Now, what's the difference for someone like Anthony Rizzo or Mitch Moreland with uh, 22 extra hits? It turns Rizzo from a 270 hitter into a 310 hitter. It turns Mitch Moreland from a 246 hitter into a 289 hitter. And it turns Albert Pujols from a 241 hitter into a 273 hitter. But with Albert Pujols, teams were able to play their shortstop basically in short left. They were able to play an infielder basically in short left field because they knew that he couldn't run. So they were able to take advantage both of his hitting patterns and the lack of uh, foot speed that he currently possesses. So a few more details about uh, Rizzo that we can uh, bring to light. Over the last two seasons, when he's hit a ground ball or a short liner against a full shift, and that's a lot of plate appearances, he's hit 175. Against partial shift and no shift, he's basically done the same. And if you add those, those two together, you can see the, there is a major benefit to be gained in terms of defensing ground balls and short line drives, specifically for Anthony Rizzo. And I have a video that I can hopefully show that will demonstrate the kinds of balls that Anthony Rizzo is hitting. The payoff pitch home. Into the shift to retire the side. Not before the damage is done. Cubs. Each team is left eight. Rizzo hits it hard, but right into the shift. Brandon Drury throws it out for the outfield grass. Those are the kinds of outs that Anthony Rizzo is making in 2017. You can see there's the shortstop. There's the second baseman out in short right field. Some other statistics just to round out our uh, presentation. We looked at uh, using our run save, defensive run save, chip run save methodology at uh, full and partial shifts and how they fare on ground balls and short line drives. We looked at it from a batting average perspective. We look at it from a run save perspective. There is a big difference uh, all the way across the board. Whatever you, you look at, there's a big difference in full shifts versus partial shifts per 100 shifts used. In 2017, 25 of the 30 major league teams had a lower opponent's batting average on grounders and short liners in full shifts rather than partial shifts. If you look at shift run save, the 10 teams that shifted the most often, they got 162 shift run save. Those are the teams like the Rays and the Brewers that we mentioned before. The 10 teams with the fewest full shifts, 61 uh, shift run saved. 46 hitters had a net loss by our system of at least five hits on grounders and short liners due to shifts in 2017. Only one hitter had a net gain of at least five hits. Anyone want to take a guess? Played in the World Series last year. Nope. Nope. Josh Reddick. Josh Reddick had a batted ball pattern in, I think it was 2014, 2015, and I think it drifted into 2016 a little bit as well, where he was in that 80% threshold of hitting the ball to the right side. Last season, he hit, I think the, the number dropped into the low to mid 70s, and he was able to get some of those opposite field hits against the shift, and he was able to uh, benefit 
And it, he hit 310 last year, so he figured, out, he figured out what he needed to do to beat the shift. So in conclusion, we think that the shift still works and works effectively, specifically full defensive shifts, the full Ted Williams shift where you're putting three uh, infielders on one side of the infielder or the other. Full shifts are of a much greater value than partial shifts, and teams could be using full shifts more than they currently do. In terms of areas for further study, I think there are quite a lot. Who should be shifted more often? Who should be shifted less often? Is there an optimal amount of shifting that a team should do? This was something that we uh, talked about before doing this presentation. That's, a, that, that's an interesting uh, thing to look at because teams have a pretty wide variety in how much they use the shift and how extreme they will get with it. Why don't teams shift more? Pitcher comfort, trust in the defense, the fallacy of small sample size. There are a variety of reasons. There was an article in MLB.com explaining why the Rockies shifted uh, less last year. Their infielders didn't feel as comfortable with it. And I, I guess if Nolan Arenado speaks, you listen. And lastly, how will new managers use shifts in 2018? Um, this is uh, interesting because if you look at how teams trended in, in managerial hirings, and there are only three, but Gabe Kapler has already shown a willingness to experiment with defenses in Philadelphia, a team that ranked in the lower uh, echelon in terms of shift usage. Alex Cora has already said that he's going to bring more defensive shifting to the table with the Red Sox. The Astros were at the very top of the leaderboard. Coro was the bench coach uh, there last season. And Ron Gardenhire, who everyone here thinks of as supremely old school, going from the Diamondbacks to the Tigers, and I know we have some Tigers employees here. Uh, Ron Gardenhire, at his introductory press conference, was asked what was the thing he learned the most from working with the Diamondbacks for, uh, after in his time in between managerial jobs, and he said, shifting works. So the Tigers ranked, by the way, I believe they ranked either last or 29th in shift usage last season. So I would expect they're gonna shift a little bit more this year. I guess we'll see. I wanna thank the folks from uh, BIS, my colleagues, Joe, Alex, Lindsay, and Brian, our video scouts who did all the tracking of the data, John Duan, the president and CEO, and the Sabre Analytics Conference personnel for having us here to speak. We actually, as I said, we're doing three presentations. You saw Brian's yesterday. Alex Vigderman will have one shortly uh, as well. Thank you. Hi, Mark. Uh, Hi. Thanks, good, good, really good presentation. Thank you. I, I know you, you considered uh, ground balls and, and soft line drives, and that is really what the shift is meant to prevent. I seem to recall reading a couple years ago, so maybe this data is, is outdated, that the opposing BAPIP mm -hmm. uh, uh, has really remained unchanged with shifting. It's always a, a hair under 300. Uh, I think I got that right. So if that is true, what factors do you think maybe relate to that if opposing BAPIP hasn't change due to shifting? I think there are a, a number of things that could go into it. You could, uh, you could take the, uh, the fly ball, the, the launch angle well, changes yeah, yeah. for hitters certainly would be one. Um, that's a, a, a I, I think I would defer to my colleagues mostly on that, but I think that that would be kind of where I would, I would use as a starting point. Okay, thanks. Sure. Go ahead. Right, like errors would increase. Like errors might increase. Mm -hmm. Right, uh, well. We're, we were looking at a number of things when we were uh, planning out the study, and one of the things that we, and we didn't present it here, is the idea of the fly ball rate and the line drive rate rising against defensive shifts, and there probably are hitters that are consciously changing their approach like that. Right, but in the end, it doesn't, in the, the grand net for him doesn't work. Right. Hey, how's it going? Hi. Um, Russell Cartland uh, for Baseball Prospectus recently um, wrote some stuff about the shift. 
um, how it potentially freaks, uh, freaks pitchers out. Um, <laughs> And they throw more balls when uh, their defenses are shifted. Yeah, walk they rates do increase drives. slightly. Say that again. Walk rates do increase slightly uh, against against defensive shifts, but the sacrifice for the defense is not overwhelming to the number of walks that are issued. Uh, and, and remember that you're also facing better hitters, Anthony Rizzo, to play uh, someone of that ilk. Yeah. <laughs> I, th I think Josh Reddick's a good example. I think he would he would be one, but Ri I mean Rizzo hasn't seemed to to change. No, I th I think the mo okay the more data that is presented like that forty six to one ratio. If you put that, I think if you put that in front of players, I think that's something that's going to happen. I think we're still in a gradual evolution of something like that. No, that would, that would be a good study. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there, I was going to say, there people are here. You could, <laughs> um, but. We didn't, that's actually, that's something I want to do because I think that's like a fascinating story. And it's not just the Indians, you look at other teams, there, there, there were five or six where the usage didn't match the, the success, where the success was much greater than you would have, they, they were very, I would imagine they were very careful about it. Ooh. For example, do the sec does it throw off the second baseman's throwing technique, et cetera, or the shortstop or the third baseman such that it might increase especially throwing rate? That's that's a fair point. We didn't look into that. <laughs> but, right. Right. I would think that the, the thing with, with, that I mentioned with the Rockies choosing to switch may have had something to do with that because the infielders are quoted in the story as feeling a little uncomfortable. Yeah. All right, thank you.